Ion API brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit this week. It is from TE Connectivity. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion API? Okay, yeah, TE comes around again. It's time for them. They they do make a lot of connectors. This came up on uh, digikey.com slash new, which is what I like to check every day to see the latest sensors, devices, chips, and more. So do check it out because you'll um, you'll get a heads up on the latest NPIs. Uh, this week, we're going to be looking at um, SMT terminal blocks, which I didn't know existed. So I learned a thing and I found a thing. I'll probably use the thing on an upcoming design. Um, so this is what they look like, and I'll also show it on the overhead. Uh, maybe actually I'll do that um, now. So I'll show you yeah, just because it's, uh, it's uh, you really want to see it in 3D. Um, so this is a uh, normal terminal block, and I'll talk about those in a moment. And this is an SMT terminal block, so you see uh, it's designed to fit flat on a PCB, whereas these um, go through the PCB. Okay, great. Now that I've shown what this looks like, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, TE makes a lot of terminal blocks. They make 169 different kinds of terminal blocks and terminal block accessories. Um, the ones that you're most used to, um, or at least I'm most used to, are, are these. They're called uh, termi blocks, and um, they're kind of cap. They're called captive cage, where you know you turn the screw at the top, and this little mouth uh, opens and closes. I'll, I'll show that also um, on the overhead later. You uh, solder them through the PCB, and they come in various pitches from 2.54 millimeter, about 0.1 inch, um, to you know 3.5 millimeter is popular. I tend to use those 3.81 millimeter and uh, 5.08 uh, millimeter, which is uh, 0.2 inches. There's also, I think, even bigger ones, but those are the kind of the most common sizes. And terminal blocks are super useful when you have a board and you want to connect wires to them. Um, and the wires don't come with like a pre-made connector. So uh, uh, to be honest, often it's motors for us because motors tend to come with bare wires. Um, they don't come with connectors, um, you know, standard size connectors, solenoids, uh, some sensors, and you want to connect them um, to your board, uh, terminal blocks are, they're very easy to use, right? You don't need special tools, you just need a screwdriver. Um, you know, they're easy to swap around, they're easy to customize. You can also put multiple wires into, um, uh, you know, one terminal block. Um, so we've used them, so like in the Cricut board, it's one of the first boards that really used a lot of terminal blocks. Um, we also have terminal block feather wing. Um, you can see here, it's got like a long line of terminals. Uh, one for each pin on the feather. Uh, you know, again, makes it easy to take something that is uh, breadboard friendly and make it wire friendly, especially like for thicker wires that don't plug into a solderless breadboard. Um, the good news is uh, these are, you know, easy to use. They're very common. Um, they're jelly bean parts. The problem is, is you need a selective solder machine uh, to really solder these in or wave soldering or do it manually because it's not an SMT process. Um, we even had a series of posts about what you have to do. Like they don't go through a surface mount machine, like a pick and place. Um, you have your board surface mounted and then you take it out and you have to manually place by hand all the connectors and then, you know, use this other machine. Um, as I, as you saw me, uh, modeling it, um, we have a KISS 102, but there's, you know, lots of different selective solder or wave soldering machines. And then it, it puts down the thick amounts of solder needed to make the mechanical connection. And then you can see on this board, the bottom of the Cricut, um, you can see what it looks like. You've got these little Hershey's Kisses of solder. Um, and each terminal block is pretty big. It needs a, it needs a lot of solder. So, you know, the, the good news is that these are nice, strong, common connectors. The problem is that you need this secondary process uh, to use them, which is kind of a pain. Um, especially if you only need like one or two terminal blocks. Like if you have a lot of them, you know, the cost and it, it's not a big deal. Like you might, if you're going to do a couple, you, you put all of them down and, and you have the selective or the wave do all of them at once. But if you only have like one or two terminal blocks, uh, like on our, uh, you know, Buckaroo Bonsai, which is a very simple little motor controller, we actually, um, you know, we wanted a surface mount um, terminal block because we really don't want to put a board this small and this inexpensive through a second selective solder process just for one terminal block. It just wasn't worth it. But all the motors that we were using for um, pumping water, they always come with bare wires on them. 
Um, and so this is a terminal block that you kind of see inside there's like a little like a wedge and you stick the wire in and you um, you can loosen it by pressing down. But these are, they're not as elegant, I think, as the, the screw type terminal blocks. Um, they were more likely to uh, get damaged. Um, people would press down too hard. Or they wouldn't press down hard enough or like they got jammy. It's, you couldn't really see what's going on inside. Like you have to really push. It, it was not, the user interface was not as elegant in my opinion as uh, the captive cage blocks. And so it was really neat to see um, these TE terminal blocks pop up that have um, SMT tabs and they come in a variety of sizes. Um, all of them do, you know, about 16, 18 to about 28 to 30 gauge. So you get, you cover your most popular 20 gauge um, segments. You can use stranded or solid core. That's another thing. You can't use stranded core with those push type or a stranded core. I mean, you can use it just fine with the, the captive cage type blocks. Um, they come in various sizes up to seven pin, uh, 3.81, 3.5 and five millimeter blocks are all available. So they are kind of standard sizes and, um, you know, amperes of current. Um, and they're, you know, pretty easy to use. Uh, the, you know, as expected, instead of a through hole pad, use a, a big surface mount pad. And you want to get those pads to be really chunky. Um, you want uh, a lot of mechanical strength because there's going to be torque on um, the connector. Uh, there's also, if you can see some in the bottom uh, left-hand section, there's two uh, positioning holes. And the positioning holes um, help with the torque uh, because as you're um, opening and closing these terminal blocks, you know, you're twisting the top and it's very easy to twist it. You know, you're, you're going to twist it all the way one way, twist it all the way the other way. And um, the terminal block holes, uh, which are not present on through hole style, and it's easy to forget to add those. You do have to add them. Um, they'll keep the board from shearing off the PCB because you don't have those through hole connections. Uh, giving you mechanical stability. So those are not optional. But if you want uh, a Terminator, that's going to be your best friend and uh, great for surface mount processes. I know why you humans cry. Yes, I know. This is a weird scene. Um, but I was thinking about Terminators, and I was like, well, you know, this is, a, this is your hands-up friendly Terminator. Um, I think that this is, you know, it's going to be more expensive than uh, through-hole Terminators, which are very jelly bean parts. But if you only need one or two, and you don't have to go through that secondary process, it could save you a lot of time, effort, and money. So do check it out. Um, they're available in the various lengths and stuff. On DigiKey in stock, uh, do check the pitch and number of pins because there's like 20 different versions. Hi, on MPI.